of segment 10 of my building the Black Pearl, the 2021 golden version. It'll be similar to other versions, so this video should help you if you're building this model. It may help that I am also a new shipbuilder, so I'm learning as I go, and some of the things that I stumble into and stumble across, maybe it'll help you regardless of what version you're trying to build. If you watch the entire segment of 10, I'll show some of the, uh, the actual construction of the ship. But for now, let me give you an overview of what I have accomplished since episode 9. You may have noticed there's some new additions in my little workshop. I've got a rotating station here that has a bandsaw on the bottom and a drill press on the top. Someday I'll do a, a story on how that was made. And my latest is, at the recommendation of a viewer, this pan of ice, and it does a lot of interesting things. It uh, not only rotates, it also tilts any direction that you need it to. But that's not what this episode is about. It's how am I coming along on the Black Pearl? You might be able to tell I have put one coat of tongue oil on the upper portion. I actually have two down here. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but this has more of a sheen to it. I finished putting all these brads or nails in in the areas that I wanted them in. And that's my own addition to the ship. It doesn't necessarily cover that in the instructions. This trim is nothing more than different types of string or rope that's been soaked in metallic paint. I decided where there are some little, little seams to, uh, to put that in place. I'll touch up here where these, where I, you know, cut it to fit. But I kind of like the look of that. I may end up going around these windows. I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. So you can see I have the rails on, I have grates on. I have this lattice work on the front of the ship. I know there is also, and it is included, I've found the pieces, there's an anchor support that will come out through here, but there's nothing that I can find in the instructions. So I've built a similar ship in the past, so I'll use those instructions and I'll do a little more detail work on, on that particular topic. I put the skylight in over the captain's quarters and I'll just make mention that when you use plastic, if you use CA glue, sometimes it can it can create a oh a residue or a fog that can affect those windows. So you may try a different type glue. Now I did use CA glue, and it didn't do too bad this time, but I've had an issue with that in the past. So this is again after one coat of tongue oil. The tongue oil absorbs into the wood, especially the first coat. I actually put it on these grates and you really can't hardly even tell. I've not done this piece yet. Another piece that I have completed, but I won't put it on because the mast goes right through it, is this turn wheel. Oops. Slide that out so it looks a little better. So it will be positioned something about like that. I wrap these handles in a little bit of rope work. So that, that turned out pretty well. And in the video, I will mention to, I had a dowel rod that I stuck through here to help straighten everything up. You could also use the ship's mast because that's what goes right through it. And you do want this to be really well made and, and straight. I wish I'd used the uh, dowel rod sooner than when I did. But that's some good progress. So I think that's about it. Now we'll, I will, uh, Rewind and go into some of the details on how I got this far. I've got these top rails ready to put on and the rail itself, they're all off of uh, placard A. These supports are H2 and uh, what I did is I glued them on here first so they're all the same height pretty much and I just used a tool to set this and then 
got them all pretty much the same height. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. And you have to look close, but I think the, the longer edge goes out towards the end. And then there's a circular part that fits here and kind of joins those two pieces. And there are three of those. Here's an example, and it's uh, this one's 27, 28, and the other's 29. 29 is the smallest. 28 is the medium size, and then the largest is 27. Now you'll notice there's an asterisk and a two. First I thought that meant there were two of them, one on each side, but in reality there are four of them and you need to glue them together. To get this piece to sit in the right place, first I glued the two sections together, and then I held this approximately where it would go, and then glued the top part on. And now I can match this up and put it where it goes. What will indicate that six goes towards the front of the ship is if you line it up here, it will land on top of one of the supports. So the tip of five and the tip of six have support underneath them. Then five has some extra material because you're going to have to bend it here to get it underneath this. And I don't think I really have those positioned exactly right. I was thinking it was lining up down there and it really ties into five. So a minor error, but I think I can make it work out just fine. I did have to do some trimming in this area. I had to sand off the bottom of a couple of these just to get everything to match up, but that's, I think that's normal. Also, I did a really good job on bending this one. This one, not so much. I did scorch it a little bit, but I think that adds to the beauty of the black pearl. So I have all the side rails in place. Everything worked out fine. Be sure and test fit parts five and six again, because there's a slight curvature to them, and there's also an angle cut where the joint is, so it fits together better. Very slight, very subtle. It doesn't mention it in the instructions at all, but it helped it fit together much better. I probably should have paid more attention to how this mounts, because it mounts on the top of this one. I took it to the lower one, and really, I should have taken it to the upper one. This one worked out better, but I could have changed the angle on these just a little bit. I don't think that that's a major issue, but uh, something you can consider. The other thing that I had not completed, and just mentioning it, is to put some of the planking wood on the back of this. I've done that. One of the earlier segments I had mentioned this A33, which is a triangular piece, and I kind of used it to gauge where these strips would go, kind of rub strips along the side of the ship. So now it's time to put it into place. I had already beveled it, and I just eyeballed it as where I thought it should go. I don't know if you can see it right here. So it's on both sides. And now I've also started to put in this lattice type work, I'll call it. So there are three pieces. They're on the D placard, this is D1. And what I've done is clipped it in place. I have glued it just here. I also bent it a little bit with my uh, hot iron bending tool. This is just clipped, so now what I'm going to do is glue these into place exactly where I want them. I'll admit it was some trial and error trying to get this to fit how I wanted. I trimmed just a couple little pieces off, not much. You can see up here this kind of crisscrosses so I will end up trimming that off because there's a boom that comes out from there. So they should be dry. What I ended up doing was gluing uh, these braces that are the vertical ones to the centerpiece. And then 
uh, they're kind of behind this top piece and behind the bottom piece just slightly and that's what worked best for me it looks very similar to what is in the instruction booklet so I'm happy with that on page 13 there's some documentation of changes that were made and basically it's this area of the ship it now just has these three grates and there's one forward so I can show you that on the actual ship so that's nothing major and this will have an L-shaped railing that came in a little plastic bag separate so it's a new addition I don't know if you can see it in this bag but and also contained in that bag were these uh, what are those balusters, I think they're called. Make note that in the photographs it shows, I think, 9 or 10. And if you do 9 or 10, you're not going to have enough for some of the other things. Because you'll need a total of 6 here. And then it also shows one on each side at the bottom of the steps. I just used uh, seven, and that's, I think, more than adequate. Now, I am going to repaint these. They look too red. I want them to be a real deep maroon, and uh, so that'll be redone. But I used seven, and I have six left, and this picture shows six being used there. The instructions show one used on each side of the staircase. In putting this rail on the top, I noticed that it's slightly smaller than the piece that was underneath. And if I look at the instructions closely, the stairs hook in right here. And I thought maybe that was supposed to have a lip there so you could catch the rail that uh, supports the, the stairs. So I did scoot that back. We'll see you in the next episode if that was the smart thing to do if, or, or if I should have brought it right up to the edge. Also when you check the parts, if it just has a number, it's in this list and you'll see where it says 70 and 78 are wooden parts, check page 13 and this one, part 71, check page 11. That's actually an error. It's not page 11, it's all on page 13. In addition to the uh, changes for this particular piece. There's also an added uh, recommendation. Again, here's your numbers 66 and 48. If you go to the page on those, 66 is some rope and 48 is an eye bolt. So this represents some eye bolts that will stand up and the rope and in the actual film this is a staircase going down. I put the grates in place and I'll make note on this part. Early on I said that there were lines where these would fit in and that maybe you'd want to take the uh, planking right up to the line. You can do that but you have to be pretty exact and then this would rest down in there just slightly I think it would be easier just to go right up to the edge and then glue this on it. So just my opinion. I used a little black tar-like material to secure these in place and that's because that's because I did have a little gap because I tried to go close to where the line was so this would recess down in there but the planks are so thin it doesn't make any difference. Once I put the tongue oil on this layer all this will blend in. I've been working on this particular piece and the um, some of the parts example A14 has lasered out little markings on it however I think those are just to show you where to put these uh, dividers and what this is it's a turn wheel and you'll have to make your own posts that come out. These are toothpicks and I've used these before. I picked these up at a Meyer store and they're just called Elegance Toothpicks but they're pointed on one end. So I'm going to use that to make these handles. 
but to make sure the diameter fit in the space, I just cut them and put them in place. Then I set each one of these little pie shaped pieces kind of in place and then I've glued two of them across from each other and I think it is this one and this one if I recall. So that will give me a basis to start getting them all in place. And the pedestal itself, they it is a fragile piece and as it turns out they do give one extra so I didn't. I uh, need the one extra. I did break one, but I was able to glue it back together, and that's the one that I went ahead and, and did not use. So here's my pedestal. I assembled part of this, and to aid in getting it straight, I had a dowel rod that just happens to be the same diameter. You can put the first one on, then the next disc, and then the framing. And this now... I think it's set up well enough and this will position itself right there. I'm debating on whether or not to take these toothpicks out or not. I'm uh, guessing I probably should. And I ended up with these out a little bit wider so those it would accommodate that size of toothpick so I can sand this down after I get it assembled and it's dry. So this will sandwich between these two pieces. And again, I'll use this to help me get it centered just right. I did not use super glue on these because I needed to move them around a little bit to get them positioned. But now that they're in the right position, I can use the CA glue and that greatly helps that hold it all centered. Hold it for a few seconds. It doesn't show it this way but I like the looks of that wood better so I'm going to put that on the other direction. Again, it, it doesn't show with those cutouts up there, but I like the looks better. So this will be positioned where the main mast comes out. The main mast will go right through it. And what I'll probably do for my electrical wiring, I'll probably drill a hole up through the center of the mast and then sneak that wire out. Uh, further up. Actually, I'll be able to take it all the way up to the crow's nest and that's where I want the lighting to be. So that's going to work out pretty well. A few more things that I've accomplished. I put some trim along here to cover any imperfections. And then right at the bottom, this is that, uh, I talked about it before, it's some rope that I paint with a uh, metallic gold paint and then use it as a trim piece. And you can see I put it around the bottom. That looks pretty good. I've gone ahead and put the captain's skylight in. I also put some plastic for windows behind the framing. And I've given one coat of tongue oil to the deck and the sides. I've decided to go ahead and do that. I may have some adhesion problems with gluing the uh, doors on the, the cannon ports but I'll just work that out somehow. So the first coat is on and it's not been quite 24 hours. The thing I like about tongue oil, it is absorbed into the wood and actually helps harden the wood. So you can tell that some places it's absorbed in a little bit more than others. Um, that's a good thing. You can possibly see what I ended up doing with the supports for this rail. I did try and get a darker maroon. That's about as dark as I could find. If I'm not happy with that, I could always just brush a little dark color, even black over them. But in reality, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So one coat of tongue oil, and you can tell that it brings out the beauty of the wood. I do like the two different tone colors that I have going. 
the hull itself has some nice, rich, dark uh, look to it. Happy with that. I'm happy with the color changes through this area. I'll do at least one more coat of the tongue oil, if not two more coats. But I leave a lot of time in between coats, minimally 24 hours. This is that optional piece that I decided to put on myself that had the carvings in it. I'm very happy with that. I still have work to do back here. I've not put tongue oil back here, and obviously I've not done the back lights. I'm holding off on all that work till towards the end. Here's that other railing where I said I was going to cut back on those, so I used just four. And to me that's satisfactory. Need to dark, darken those somewhat. Actually quite a bit probably. And that'll be it for episode 10.